Many of us often wonder what our young people go through to achieve a spot on the Olympic team. And what happens to these people as they grow older and no longer have the same physical skills? Do the skill sets they learn preparing for the Olympics also carry through into their older life? I had the opportunity to meet a man who achieved his place on a U.S. Olympic team, winning a gold medal in swimming, and then went on to utilize his Olympic endeavors throughout his life. This man is Adolf Kiefer. When I talked with Adolf and his wife, Joyce, I learned that his first swimming experience began with a near fatal fall into a Chicago drainage canal. And I ran over this thing and by accident, I fell in. First of all, I didn't lose my head. I rolled over, kicked my feet, and slowly but surely worked my way up to the parapet, which I climbed back up onto the main area, dripping wet, went back home. Yeah, that was the first time I ever swam in my life, swimming the backstroke. And the backstroke really became a natural for you. Yeah, I thought I invented that stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Falling into the canal didn't deter Adolf from swimming again. Young Adolf was encouraged by his father to compete against his peers. That I was in a swimming mate, which is my father was still alive. And I got second. And he said, son, here's a dollar. He gave me a buck. And he said, son, you're going to be the best swimmer in the world. So I said, well, by gosh, I'm going to do that. And he died right after that. And uh, that prompted me to swim every day. It became the, the one thing in my life I wanted to do and uh, be the number one in the world if possible. Adolf was only 11 when confronted with the death of his father. The year was 1929 and the Great Depression had just begun. No smoke coming out of chimneys, everything was dead. There's no life in any of the factories. Poor people on the streets with nothing to do. That was a depression, and you don't think anything of the fact that uh, you have to walk to school, you can't, you know, two miles, or uh, sneak on a bus or hop in the back of a truck because you have no money. Adolf was forced to work hard to provide for his family. His determination led him to find ways to both earn money and swim. And I worked all the lunch periods so that I could earn money working at that time in the evening, I'd go to Lakeshore Athletic Club in Chicago, 850 Lakeshore Drive, and I was an elevator operator. And between that time, I'd eat with the employees in their cafeteria, and I'd swim maybe two or three hours, and then take the streetcar home. And all the streetcar people knew me, because that'd be one end of the town to the other, and they'd, I'd sleep. They'd always wake me up to get off of the streetcar. Everything seemed to fall into place. Adolf's hard work and perseverance paid off. At the age of 15, he set the world's record for the backstroke. Adolf tells the story about, uh, as a high school boy, he had been swimming very well. And uh, he went down to the Lakeshore Athletic Club and asked the coach. The coach watched him and, and finally he said to him, well, I'm going to time you. And so he, he timed him. And, uh, and then he said, Adolf, do it again. <laughs> and he swam again, and he said, you just broke the world's record. <laughs> and he, so he was on the team. The Olympic trials were at Rhode Island, and preparing for it, of course, was Lakeshore Athletic Club, Stan Browninger, had more to do with anybody at that time. And uh, I was ready for the tryouts, and uh, I qualified as a result of that. With the rise of Hitler in Nazi Germany, the possibility arose that the U.S. might not participate in the Berlin Olympics. We didn't know we were gonna leave on the SS Manhattan until the day that we sailed because it had to be approved by the committee, the AAU, and uh, the press in New York were opposed to sending a team to Germany. Even in 1936? 1936, my own relatives. One of them was a professor, the other was a school teacher, and they were whispering to me, he said, Adolf, Adolf Hitler is not what we think he is. He's burning our books. His symbol was supremacy. His symbol was to say that Germany has arrived, and of course, it was the first of the big Olympics. 
The Olympics were fantastic. Here I'm a little high school kid. It's a big shot, you know, big pictures of front covers of magazines. Well, Adolf must have seen one of those, and he said when he went to the Olympic Village, he said, I'd like to see a few of the swimmers. He was there with Shamar Austin, the head of the Olympics. He couldn't speak English. I couldn't speak German. And uh, there was just a normal conversation of, hello, how are you? How do you like Germany and things of that nature? With the cancellation of the 1940 Olympics due to World War II, Kiefer joined the Navy as a swimming instructor. He came to realize that many sailors and airmen were drowning due to a lack of survival gear and swimming instruction. And seeing all the tattered ships coming in from England and the United States in the, the port, and here we were losing more lives in the Navy because of drowning than bullets because these men were not prepared. And I couldn't sleep at night. And I went to see this captain that I knew in charge of sports. He brought in the Admiral, and I stayed there for the full day, talking to him about what we should do in the Navy to save lives. We reduced the number of drownings because of this. And I think that, to me, was more of an inspiration to teach and save lives than winning a gold medal in the Olympics. For 12 years, Adolf competed internationally in the backstroke and individual medley in over 2,000 competitions, losing only twice. Because of his celebrity status, he often participated in a number of promotional events, one of which he recalls took place in the 1950s with Ronald Reagan. So we dove in and swam, and I had to wait slow. <laughs> Hurry up, you know. <laughs> so I let him beat me. No, he was a great guy. We knew that he was great for health, sports, physical fitness. So I'm glad I thought he did a great job as president, too. Following his service with the U.S. Navy, Adolph started Kiefer and Associates. Over the years, his company created a full array of aquatic safety products and innovations for the swimmer. The Beijing Olympics used his lane buoys to reduce the swimmer's waves. Kiefer's rescue devices are used at pools around the world. To this day, Adolf's passion continues in helping people become better swimmers and encouraging parents to take an active role in the development of their children. <laughs>